um, Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, County Mayor, uh, Leader of Fianna Fáil, uh, who made his presence known earlier. <laughs> you must think there's an election in the air or something. <laughs> stand up, you all. <laughs> it's great, of course, if you want to stand and you might be on the other foot here, you can all these names on this. So, uh, but for now, it's confidence and supply, so you can't say anything else. <laughs> um, and of course, to, uh, to Judge Clue, uh, MEP, uh, who's here with us also, uh, and Chairperson of IT at Cork, uh, Anthony and Callaghan, uh, and also uh, Ola Manny, who spoke to us earlier, uh, who's doing such a good job uh, in terms of trying to build this cluster into something even stronger than it already is. Um, firstly, tonight is a uh, Tonight's a celebration. Uh, it's a recognition of, of talent, uh, of an appetite for risk, of, of business courage. Uh, we're celebrating SMEs in this room, we're celebrating startups, we're cel celebrating big multinationals, uh, state companies too, uh, all doing great things uh, in the IT space. And all doing it out of corporate care. And the truth is now that IT, in terms of its contribution, to the economy in this part of Ireland is actually the biggest contributor now in terms of foreign direct investment. Uh, across Cork and Kerry, we have 30,000 people employed um, in the IT sector. Uh, it is a huge and growing contributor to our national economy uh, and it's a big driver locally as well. Uh, so what tonight is about, and it's the 13th year that we're doing it, and each year gets bigger and better, uh, we're celebrating uh, the talent in this room, um, the leadership that has been shown, uh, and obviously the awards that are going to be given out later on. Um, so I want to salute all of you um, for the leadership that you've given, uh, and in particular, uh, the ambition that you have both for this part of Ireland, uh, but also for the companies that, that many of you lead. Uh, we are living through extraordinary times of change, of threats, uh, of uh, unpredictable outcomes uh, to so many things. Um, but the Irish economy right now uh, is stable and balanced and growing uh, in a way I think uh, that is more resilient than it has ever been. Uh, and I don't say that lightly. Um, and we are also uh, living through a period of change in court. Uh, for the first time in my view, uh, Ireland has a proper second city strategy, uh, has a 20 year plan to essentially create a significant counterbalance to the east coast of Dublin and its dominance in terms of its magnetism for investment and job creation and growth uh, and population. Uh, and we are at the start of, a, of delivering on a plan which is underway to essentially grow this city from a population of 130,000 to a population of 350,000 people over two decades. And we're doing that by redesigning boundaries and borders. Um, sorry, I use the term border too often these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of imprinted on my brain. Um, uh, boundaries, uh, reshaping local government, um, and creating political consensus, I hope, across parties and getting support in doing that for laying the foundations uh, for a period of growth that this city, and indeed this county, uh, hasn't seen since independence. Uh, and we're starting to see on the back of that ambition and certainty, in terms of policy ambition, uh, an appetite for private sector investment, particularly in our city centre, uh, that's hugely exciting, and it's only getting started. And your sector is a big part of facilitating that growth. Uh, and your sector will be uh, a big part of actually filling the, uh, that office space, attracting in the talent, not only that is being delivered through our university and our uh, Institute of Technology and other uh, third level institutions in the city, soon to be, by the way, uh, a, a second university uh, in Cork, uh, in, a, in, uh, in the Munster Technology University, uh, but also, uh, as importantly, attracting in talent from all over the world. Uh, and if Cork is going to succeed, as we believe it will, well then it needs to be a cosmopolitan international city. 
not simply competing with Dublin and creating a counterbalance in this island, but competing uh, with clusters in other parts of Europe and other parts of the world, where we provide a quality of life and a career opportunity uh, that is competitive uh, with any, anywhere else in the world. And that is why this cluster and the work that IT at Cork are doing is so important. Because no one IT company, regardless of how successful you are, can, on your own, create the kind of cluster that creates a reputation globally for Cork, and also Kerry, but in particular Cork, uh, to be part of, a, of an international growth cluster in the IT space that is creating the kind of momentum that results in a night like tonight having to turn away people six weeks out, despite the fact that we're 350 people here at sea. Uh, so that is the, the appetite for the event tonight, wanting to support it, and wanting to be part of what IT at Cork is central to creating across Cork now. Uh, well over 200 companies as part of that network, working in partnership uh, for education, for training, for mentoring, uh, for, for IT events, um, so that we continue to reinforce not just the brilliance of individual companies, but the strength and ambition of the cluster that is a, a, a collective um, that IT uh, at Cork is actually there uh, to endorse. Um, so I really want to, to thank uh, those that take on positions of responsibility uh, in this organization, uh, particularly Anthony uh, this evening, uh, and Owen, uh, who is a full-time um, director uh, in terms of managing and growing uh, and uh, ensuring that the potential of the cluster uh, continues to get stronger year after year. Um, can I say that this is an important week for the country? For obvious reasons. Um, and we'll see how the match goes tomorrow. <laughs> we'll have, we'll have, we'll have, we have two important results tomorrow. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm not sure that anybody in government or in this room or indeed in opposition can do anything about either of them right now. Um, we've got a deal between 28 governments, including the British government. It's not the first time that's happened. Uh, we managed to negotiate a deal with the previous British Prime Minister too. Uh, a deal that protected Irish interests. Mainly because of the solidarity that we've managed to build for Ireland's case, Ireland's vulnerability, Ireland's exposure, to a decision that our neighbour has made. Um, and we have had to effectively reshape that deal uh, in key areas, uh, to now get a deal with a new British Prime Minister that is looking at Brexit differently through a more aggressive lens. Uh, but still, uh, we have managed to get a deal that protects core Irish interests, protecting peace on this island first, ensuring that we have an all island economy that can function to reinforce that peace and those relationships. Second, uh, and in order to do that, ensuring that we don't have any border infrastructure. Uh, that can be the source of corrosion in terms of relationships north and south and between communities in Northern Ireland. And so the deal that we now have has no sanitary and private sanitary checks, no landlord checks, no regulatory checks, no customs checks, no tariffs. The Irish economy on the island of Ireland will continue to function as it does today. And we have tried to create, as best we can, a de dramatized solution in the context of Northern Irish ports being an entry point for EU customs, while at the same time Northern Ireland remaining as a legal part of the UK customs territory, to try to create this balance and this hybrid model, if you like. Uh, that can allow both communities in Northern Ireland, I hope, in time, uh, to accept this, accept this new approach. And at the same time, allowing the United Kingdom as a whole to leave the European Union, but in a way that's managed and predictable, and takes us into the next phase of Brexit. So just in case anybody is about to put their head in their hands, um, uh, unfortunately, this is just the start. Um, if we get this deal ratified, uh, in Westminster tomorrow, and if the United Kingdom leave on the 31st of this month, uh, that will take us into what's called an orderly transition period, which will last between one and three years, to give us the time and space, and I think we'll need all three years, 
the time and space to put a sensible future relationship in place on trade, on data, on aviation, on security, on defence, on fishing, and the list goes on. It'll be complex and it'll be a very difficult negotiation, but for many of your businesses, it'll be essential for how you plan for the future. Just like many of you have been forced into putting in place a no-deal Brexit plan, which you should keep, by the way, on the table, just in case. I think that is a far less likely outcome now than at any point in the last number of months, but it is still a possibility. Nothing would surprise me with the British political system right now. And I don't mean that in any kind of a smart way. Um, we cannot rely on it. So we have to plan for all outcomes, and so do you. Um, so I, I want to say, just in finishing on Brexit, that I would like to think uh, that it's recognised amongst most people in Ireland that the Irish political system has responded to an extraordinary challenge in an extraordinarily mature way. Uh, Irish political parties have worked together, not on the basis of government and opposition, but on the basis of trying to get the job done. Uh, and I want to recognise Michael Martin for that, uh, in terms of his role uh, as the leader of the opposition in assisting me and Leo Varadkar and others uh, in negotiating what I think is the best deal that was available, uh, given uh, the, the approach uh, of the current British Prime Minister. Uh, and I want to thank him for that. Uh, and I think that uh, the country will thank him too. Um, That being said, he was looking for a bit too much attention. Right? <laughs> so, um, I think also the relationship between governments and business has been quite extraordinary. Um, we've tried to obviously maintain and protect that through constantly uh, communicating with business leaders across the country. But the fact that Irish business never panicked throughout this process despite the fact that there was extraordinary pressure in the context of preparing for what would, would undoubtedly be significant disruption to many of your business models in a no-deal scenario. The fact that that never spilled over uh, into a divide in opinion and approach towards these negotiations, uh, in my view, uh, uh, shows a remarkable, re remarkable maturity amongst business leaders as well. Um, so let's hope uh, that the contribution we've made to getting a deal at a governmental level uh, will be ratified now in the British Parliament uh, and in the European Parliament too uh, in the days ahead. So look, this evening is certainly not about Brexit. Uh, it's about recognising people uh, and approaches uh, and great companies that are doing great things for Cork and for Ireland uh, and indeed internationally. Uh, the IT sector is going to continue to grow and dominate the Irish economy as we move forward into a new era, hopefully of a much more sustainable growth story than perhaps we've seen in the past. But it will be technology that will allow us to maintain the quality of life that we expect while doing it in a way uh, that addresses new challenges that we must address, uh, in particular climate change. Um, so, uh, I look forward to uh, celebrating with, with all the winners uh, and leaders uh, this evening. Uh, let's have a good night. Let's forget about the pressures of tomorrow for the moment uh, and, uh, and celebrate what we have uh, in this room this evening, which is very special. Thank you very much.